Hey there, here's a little something that you should know. So, the cost of a brand new home has dropped quite a bit lately. It went from $568,000 to $487,000 by October, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The price tag for new homes has fallen more than 17% since the peak in fall 2022. Now people are wondering if it's a good time to buy a house, especially a new one, because that market is seeing the biggest drop. Check out this chart. On the left, you see new home prices taking a dive hitting new lows in October. On the right, existing home prices are going up, reaching new highs after a dip in 2022 and early 2023. We're going to dig into why there's such a big gap between new and existing home prices and figure out if it's a good time to think about buying. It's super important to look at the differences between new and existing homes right now, as this is one of the biggest gaps in US history. New home prices are definitely going down, while existing home prices are still on the rise after a small correction. So what's the deal? The key factor in the housing market is something called the month supply. Let's dive in and figure it out together. All right, let's break down the month supply thing. This metric looks at both how much housing is available and how fast people are buying it. It tells us how many months it would take to sell all the homes at the current sales pace. Here's the deal. If the monthly supply is more than six, it means there's a bunch of houses for the sales pace, so prices generally go down. If it's less than six, there aren't many houses for the sales pace, and that puts pressure on prices to go up. Now, for new homes, the monthly supply is at 7.8. That's a lot of inventory for the current sales pace. During tough times, like recessions, the month supply tends to shoot up because sales slow down. New homes have had a supply over six for a while, explaining the big drop in prices. But check this out. In the existing home market, it's a whole different story. The month supply for existing homes has been super low since around 2011. There's a massive gap in the inventory situation between new and existing homes, which is why new home prices are dropping and existing home prices are on the rise again. It's like they're playing different games with their inventory. Let's zoom in on the new construction scene. Check out this chart that tracks how many months the month supply was below six. Back in the day, from 1995 to 2006, there was a whopping 115 months where the supply was below six, pushing prices up. It took until 2012 for things to tighten up again, with two stretches from 2012 to 2014 and 2016 to 2018 causing prices to shoot up. We can also look at when the consecutive months with a month supply above six led to prices going down. Starting in 2006, there was a 66 month period where the supply was too high, causing prices to drop. But after 2012, there was hardly any extended time with downward pressure on prices until 2022. Since 2022, the month supply for new homes has been above six for 21 months straight, with no sign of slowing down. This prolonged high supply situation, coupled with slow new home sales, has hammered prices down by a massive 177% for the median new home sale. It's been a tough time for new home prices no doubt. Let's put it all on one chart and see the ups and downs in the new home market. The green periods show when the month supply was below six, pushing prices up. The red ones? Well, that's when the month supply was above six, pushing prices down. Right now, we're in a long streak of high month supply, leading to a hefty 17.6% drop in the median sales price of a new home. It's the second largest price drop ever. Sure, prices shot up before, but going back to those old prices won't happen overnight. It's a process, and we've been in it for 21 months. And guess what? It's not stopping anytime soon. The job market is softening and mortgage rates are hanging high, making homes less affordable. Now, some say new home prices aren't really falling. They argue builders are just making smaller houses. There's some truth to that. The median square footage of a new home has gone from 2,500 in 2016 to 2,200 today. But here's the kicker. When we talk about prices dropping from October 2022 to October 2023, it's not just about smaller houses. The average square footage of a new home went from around 2,300 to 2200, a modest change. If we adjust the median sales price for the median square footage, we see the price per square foot is actually coming down, dropping about 10.2% from the peak in 2022. That's the biggest drop ever, even after those soaring prices. So the idea that it's all about smaller homes isn't the full story. About 60% of the drop in new home prices is because of the supply and demand situation, while 40% is due to changes in the size and composition of new homes. Now, shifting gears 
years to the existing market, where average prices are on the upswing. It's not too surprising since the month supply is super low, way below six. Interestingly, existing home prices have been pretty flat for over a year, despite this low supply situation. You might be thinking, prices aren't falling where I live. True, existing home prices are rising, but it's a different story in areas with a lot of new construction. Only a handful of markets are responsible for most of the new homes, and they're seeing prices drop. In places without much new construction, existing home prices are rising without competition from builders adding supply. Check out this chart showing the depth and duration of the decline in home prices. On the left, you've got markets at peak levels, like Atlanta, Miami, Detroit, New York, Boston, and Chicago. But on the right, markets like San Francisco, Seattle, Dallas, Denver, Phoenix, and Las Vegas have seen prices drop because of a ton of new construction causing a ripple effect into the existing market. Let's break down the average price-to-income ratio for new construction and existing homes. On the left, you've got the ratio for new homes, and on the right, it's for existing homes. The data for new homes can be a bit wild, so we're smoothing it with a three-month average for a clearer picture. Looking at the left chart, the long-term average ratio for new homes is around 8.1. At the start of 2022, it shot up to 9.7, the highest ever. As new home prices dropped, the average ratio normalized, currently sitting at 8.4, not far from the average. Since the monthly supply for new homes is still way above 6, this ratio is likely to keep coming down, potentially putting the new construction market in line for average or even below average valuation soon. Now on the right, the existing home market has an average ratio slightly below 8 but it's currently at 9.2, significantly overvalued compared to history. With the monthly supply remaining low in the existing market, there's little chance for a significant change in the next few months. This situation might persist until the job market loosens up, impacting sales and adding more inventory. So, is it a good time to buy? If you're in an area with lots of new construction, it's a buyer's market, with valuations around average and potential to drop below average. Home builders might be eager to unload inventory inventory. But if you're dealing with the existing market only, buying now means getting in at some of the highest valuations in history. That concludes this video for today. If you learned something new, make sure to comment down below and share to us your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out the next time we upload a new video. Until then, happy investing.